Alex from Grey Sand and in this video I'm going to show you how I've built these raised garden beds out of recycled materials. The aim of this project was to upgrade our vegetable garden from a couple of boxes on the ground to something more comfortable and efficient to work and grow vegetables from. We wanted the new raised garden beds to save our backs and knees while also keeping out the pesky birds, possums and children. If you only take one piece of information from this video, you should know that when using recycled materials, the project always takes five times as long due to the demolition, storage and preparation involved. This video will include the process of how I built raised garden beds from recycled materials while making sure the garden is pest proof using Avery wire. You will also see how we set up the garden beds with good drainage, water retention and soil quality. And lastly, I'll go through how I set up an automatic watering system that can be customised for each season. Okay, so the first step in building these raised garden beds is to install the recycled corrugated iron to the perimeter of the garden. I designed this garden to be U-shaped with a walkway through the middle that is wide enough to fit a wheelbarrow and enough space to work in. Once I've installed the roofing sheets of iron around the perimeter of the garden, I'll install two recycled hardwood posts to the inside corners of the garden beds. If you would like to see how we got to this stage of the project, you can see the videos I've previously made and posted here on the channel. I then screw two vertical battens into the opposite side of the roofing sheets. The plan is to brace the inside wall of the garden bed back to the outside wall that is supported by the posts. To do this, I'll use some reclaimed metal roofing purlins that I'll attach to the top and bottom of the posts. This is going to utilise the strength of the outside posts and tie all the raised garden beds together. Once the inside posts are installed and braced, I can screw the corrugated iron to the inside positions of the raised garden beds. I left all the roofing iron long and just went around after cutting it to length. To brace and support the inside wall of the garden, I attach three hardwood vertical timbers along the length of the garden bed. These timbers are also going to be used to attach the hardwood handrail trims later in the project. Using some scrap metal bracing, I connect the two walls of the garden beds together, top and bottom. By bracing the two sides of the garden beds together, it will ensure the raised beds are strong enough to fill with rubble, organic matter and soil as everything is tied and supported back to the structural posts. Next, I finish installing the roofing iron to enclose the garden beds and then screw off all the metal roofing into the framing. I'm going to run you through the process of what to fill the gardens with and in which order a bit later in the video. But first I need to install the gate and finish all the timber work. The next part of the project is to build a nice handrail ledge around the inside of the garden. This will be handy to place tools and plants on while we are gardening. This detail is also needed to cover the sharp edge of the roofing iron. I'm using recycled hardwood fence palings to build this handrail ledge. I just give them a quick arras with a block plane to take off any sharp edges. Then the palings can be screwed to the timber framing battens. I'm using 50mm stainless steel decking screws to attach the fence palings to the framework. I'll attach one paling on top of the frame to cover the roofing sheet and one paling to go on the face side to create a nice little handrail ledge. This will be useful to place tools and plants as well as covering the sharp edge of the roofing line.
I continue to use these hardwood fence palings to trim out the bottom of the garden beds, the internal corners and also to cover the vertical hardwood frame locations. Once I finish trimming out the inside of the garden beds, I continue with the hardwood trims on the outside. I've learned from using recycled materials that it can be difficult to have enough of the material to finish the job, as each recycled material is pretty unique so that when you run out of it, it can be pretty hard to find the same or similar material to finish the project. I'm going to be lucky with this project and just scrape through with enough of the hardwood fence palings to finish off the job. I'm happy with how the free recycled hardwood and metal have gone together. I think it looks pretty nice, but let me know in the comments what you think of this material combination. I'm interested to see what you think. As we have birds and possums here that like to eat any outdoor vegetables, I need to make sure this garden is 100% pest proof. To do this, I'll roll out and attach 10mm Avery wire to the posts and gable roof. I use staples, roofing screws and the top piece of the external timber trim to secure the Avery wire to the frame. Okay, now that's the garden beds built. It's time that we can move on to the fun part of the project and fill the raised garden beds. After laying out the weed matting, the first layer of the garden will contain gravel and stones, followed by a layer of logs. These materials will help the garden with drainage and soil compaction. As we want the water to be able to drain away freely in heavy rains and for the garden not to fill up like a bucket. As the logs break down, they become porous like a sponge, retaining and releasing moisture when needed. And then as the base breaks down over time, it also turns into a rich garden bed soil. The next layer we'll add to the garden will contain sticks and twigs, followed by a layer of mulch. The mulch we used contains leaves, wood chips, bark and organic matter. The mulch is great for keeping the soil healthy. As the mulch decomposes, it adds organic matter to the soil, improving soil quality over time. We finished filling the raised garden beds by adding a layer of high quality topsoil of about 300 millimetres for the vegetables to grow in. A good topsoil is made up of a combination of sand, silt and clay. This topsoil we are using is rich in nutrients and organic matter and should help retain moisture and ensure good drainage. Jules was really happy to have a nice new garden. She even planted new winter vegetables the moment the topsoil was placed into the garden. We've got broccoli, lettuce, spring onion, The last part of this garden project will be the drip irrigation system that I'm going to show you how installed to be self-watering on a timer. It's a great system that is efficient and simple to set up. The first step is to connect a 300 kPa pressure reducer to the nearest outdoor garden tap. This is needed to reduce the water pressure going through the garden irrigation system. Next, I connect the tap timer to the pressure reducer. This will allow me to set a time for the irrigation to start and finish for each day. It also allows me to set the period of time for the irrigation to be watering the garden. I set this timer to come on at 7am and 7pm each day for 25 minutes each session. The next step is to connect the standard garden hose to the tap timer and run it into the vegetable garden. Once I have the garden hose on the raised garden beds, I simply connect the Pope Weeper hose and then run it through the garden to where I want the drip irrigation system to water the garden beds. Oh. 
As you can see here, I loop the irrigation hose through the garden beds and then once the timer comes on, the weeper hose allows the garden beds to get a good soaking. This strip feed irrigation system I chose is an efficient method for watering vegetable gardens. It ensures the plants receive the right amount of water without oversaturating the soil. This system provides a steady water supply while maintaining a consistent soil moisture level while also conserving water. The flexible hose and timer allows for the watering schedule to be easily customised to meet the needs of different plants and seasons. Cucumbers coming out of the garden. Yeah, well these boys eat at least one cucumber each a day. Do you like cucumbers, Koa? They yummy? What's your favourite food from the garden? Strawberries. Is there any strawberries left? Can I have one? No, not yet. Not yet? They're grabbing some for you. We, we, we. Oh, oh, oh we're gonna get me a cucumber. Mm -hmm. That's a yummy one. Who wants a bite? Hey, Mama, let's go get some mm -hmm. potatoes. Let's go get some potatoes. Bring the Wilbur. Come. Is the garden a good height to work from? Oh, it's so comfortable. Hey, and I'm hey. a bit taller, so I needed a bit raised. It means that obviously bending over my back and knees are going to feel. Yes, right. Oi. To bend. With a little smooth stick, we put slinger them. No, no. And we put the large up the top so that the boys can't access sit and then it's easier to um, to keep it shut because the boys will just open it and not shut it but we need to have it shut for the for the possums.